Hello everybody! In this tutorial we are going to design a CWDM demultiplexer multiplexer, using arrayed waveguide gratings. This will be done on the IPKIS Photonics Design platform and in particular on the AWG designer module that plugs into the platform. What is an AWG? An AWG is basically a multiplexer demultiplexer device which inherently puts together different wavelength channels that are physically separated in different wavelengths, multiplexes them into one channel. And conversely, one channel can be demultiplexed in several. How does this work? Well, it uses the same principle as in antenna arrays. Light comes in, in the, what is called an input star coupler, usually through the center aperture here. The light is then equally spread over all waveguides here. And you see the curve front here makes sure that this happens in phase. Then the light travels over waveguides that are carefully designed in length so that when the light arrives here, constructive interference happens for each of the wavelengths where you want the multiplexing to happen. This is very similar to, in, to the principles of arrayed waveguide antennas, where a phase difference at the output here will lead to some kind of beam steering for a particular wavelength. Hence the name arrayed waveguide gratings. IPKIS AWG Designer is a module that plugs into the IPKIS Photonics Design platform and of course embraces the, the principles we hold dear in, into our platform which is that there is a single component definition that controls everything from the layout all the way to the circuit layout passing through all the steps be in between which is physical simulation and circuit model generation. Everything can be controlled in Python and parametrically. And when you look at the final layout of an AWG, you see it is indeed a complex circuit. It contains grating couplers that are connected by waveguides into a star coupler, which again contains a lot of waveguides afterwards that have different lengths, going back into a star coupler. So overall, an AWG is really a very complicated circuit where the individual components have to be simulated using physical simulators. IPKIS is very well suited for this kind of device because we have this central approach that we call a specification-driven workflow. How does that work? At the input, we have things you care about, such as functional specification as where, how, where your channels are, what the FSR of your um, of your device is, as well as optical rules, such as the bend radius imposed by your fab, but also rules that relate more to manufacturability, such as minimum spacing between layers. All of this serves as an input to our AWG designer module. And what comes out? Well, what comes out is a, is a layout of a manufacturable AWG that has a reusable layout and a reusable circuit model, which means that this model and layout can be plugged into a bigger circuit or used just like that. What's great about this approach as well is that you know that what you have put on your die, what you manufacture, is also what you simulate. And for um, AWGs where design compromises come from trade-offs that relate to layout, simulation, footprint, this is a very welcome strategy that is very much appreciated by AWG designers around the world. How does this work in practice? Well, as I said earlier, functional specs, optical rules and PDK rules are at input. Then the designer will go through different steps that we call AWG generation, AWG simulation and analysis, and finally AWG finalization. 
AWG generation is basically the design of the what we call the bare AWG with nothing attached to it. And it's very layout oriented. At the end, you just have your AWGs that is constituted of your uh, input and output star coupler and your uh, waveguides in between. Then, using that generated AWG, we will simulate it. And using circuit simulators and also um, uh, physical simulators. All the bookkeeping is done by IPKIS. And the output spectrum can then be analyzed against the specs. Finally, we will go through a finalization step where we take care of routing to the out outside world, such as edge or grating couplers, but also uh, take care of fixing DRC rules that are very specific to each foundry we work with. But at the end of the day, after circling the, through these steps, you get an optimized AWG layout with a matching representative model that can be manufactured. For our example here, we will go for a 400G uh, LR8 uh, physical standard that is uh, commonly used uh, in 400 gigabit internet. It uses uh, eight parallel wavelength channels um, and is basically called a coarse CWDM uh, for 50 gigabits in each channel. Here you see the frequency map uh, of this standard. And so we will actually implement nine, an AWG with nine transmission channels. Uh, the central one will not be used. So now uh, we will actually uh, show how is this is done in IPCIS. Well, the code structure is really reflective of the different steps I introduced earlier. So we have a, a Python file called generate AWG, um, where the different steps uh, will be done sequentially. So first we have generate AWG, that is a function of all the things you want. In this case, we do FSR and a waveguide width, but the parametricity of the generate function can be anything you care about. Uh, but what matters is that at the output you have an AWG coming out. The next step is to simulate it. So the output of this AWG will be input into a simulate function that will output an S matrix, which can then be analyzed. What is happening? Well, we have a GDS layout, a simulated spectrum, a synthesis report, and an analysis report. Now it's up to you. Let's get started. So what you have to do is take this uh, uh, script that we have here and make an AWG with um, uh, an FSR that is 12,000 gigahertz instead of uh, 10,400. For that, you need to open Lucida Academy, where you see uh, the generate awg.py in uh, the getting started in the CWDM AWG tutorial. I have already run this file with an FSR of 10,400 and this is what comes out. So we have a need folder AWG 10,400 and we have the GDS of the bare AWG We can here visualize in K layout. See, it's pretty neat. Where with a star coupler at the output and the star coupler at the input. We also have uh, the spectrum and a simulation report um, and the simulation the analysis report. So here we can see that what is the crosstalk in each channel, the insertion loss in each channel, the, the error uh, in, in wavelength uh, as to how well your channels align with the desired wavelength. Okay, so now if I go here and I change this to 12,000, which is what you have to do as well, and run this, we will create a new AWG. So this takes a couple of minutes Let's uh, wait together. The first thing that happened is a synthesis. 
So based on the input parameters, the AWG Designer Toolbox created what we call design parameters, which are very layout oriented. She says what angles do the apertures appear, etc., etc. The number of arm, the delay lengths, etc. All of these parameters are then saved in a synthesis report that you can see here. And here we have the layout of our bare AWG. In this case, we can already compare our synthesis report from the 10,400 and uh, 12,000 uh, FSR. So let's have a split screen here. A 12,000 has more arms and that the grating is bigger, which makes sense. Also, the delay length is shorter, which also makes sense. Next step is we can uh, compare, have a look at the bare AWG. And here we see it. It's very similar to the previous one. But there are more waveguides here. Now this AWG is simulated. Okay, the simulation has terminated and then you see the spectrum. Also an analysis report will be generated. That you can compare with the report of the earlier one, of the 10,400. And you see that the crosstalk goes down and the insertion loss goes down too. So in, it seems to be a better AWG according to those specs. In the meanwhile, our fully routed 12,000 uh, gigahertz FSR AWG has been generated, which will also be simulated. Here we see the simulated transmission spectrum, which includes the grating coupler. And here we go. We have now created an AWG with 12,000 gigahertz, which has finalized GDS that can be manufactured an analysis report of the finalized AWG and the spectrum. Thank you for your attention. In the next video we will dig deeper into how to use IPKIS AWG designers to write your own generate, simulate and analyze functions so that you can create your own AWG. Thank you very much.